to understand this question uh we need to look at the where we started and where we are going so this all started about uh 15 18 years before before as you know through bitcoin as a distributed ledger for the decentralized uh, world and that was a remarkable achievement which focused on a single currency being statefully managed and transferred using anonymous validators in a public network and uh, and it provided the kind of trust and security that you're looking that that we expect of from a decentralized system fast forward to 2014 and there was an attempt to there were several attempts in fact to uh, support multiple cryptocurrencies on the same blockchain in fact there was a project early on called the uh, colored coin which attempted to do that and the culmination of that was the uh, 2014 uh, uh, birth of ethereum where uh, uh, smart contracts with the ability to have general purpose capabilities supporting multiple cryptocurrencies so the idea was to go from one cryptocurrency to thousands of cryptocurrencies uh, and and that was a great great progress and worth of several smart contract based chains have come in from 2014 in the last 7 8 years but fast forward to 2023 and now the way you use, use technology has fundamentally changed web3 networks and digital networks are no longer about connectivity it is we operate through technology so we have moved away from using web3 and dlt to manage uh, thousands of cryptocurrencies to supporting billions of digital assets and this shift shift is fundamental so we are no longer supporting cryptocurrencies web3 networks are starting to support human like digital interactions so what does this mean this fundamentally means that uh, we are moving away from an app centric world to a participant centric world we are moving away from a network focused model to an interaction focused model we are moving away from thousands of cryptocurrencies to supporting billions of digital assets and we are moving away from a sta sta static generalized model to a dynamic and personalized model and this places enormous demands on today's web3 networks and the solution has been to create shard chains rollups and side chains which are like wall gardens away from the main network to support this heterogeneous value transfer needs zillions of digital assets and the need for participant centricity and interaction focus now this is creating enormous complexity in interoperability and more importantly in security and privacy the same data is now available in many networks multiple tokens are required to deliver the same job and thousands of bridges are required to really provide the interoperability so what we need is in dlt and the blockchain solution which is able to create a flat internet of value where multiple networks can coexist in a flat network and scale as needed to support the emerging needs of a digitally interacting society in a simple and flexible fashion like what tcpip does today for the information world so that's what we have done at moin we have built a context aware peer to peer network and a blockchain network which allows people to scale infinitesimally without the need for side chains and charge chains as a necessity of course it will be an option based on the personalization need for the users and so this allows for scalability simplified access and also an equitable support for the digitally interactive world and how have we done this we have done this by bringing in three 
foundational elements. One, a new consensus mechanism, which works at, works at the interaction level. So it's a peer-to-peer -peer consensus mechanism. So the central bottlenecks are eliminated. Thereby you have scalability as needed. We have also built a new data structure, which is called MDAG, multi-linked DAG, which brings the best of the UTXO based chains, which were there early on, and the account based chains, which are there today, to uh, deli deliver uh, both security and scalability. So as you scale, as you put millions of nodes on the network, we are able to have security as well. So MDAG provides that. And finally, we have also built a new language and an execution environment called Coco Lang and Pisa. And these are languages and execution environments specifically built for digital assets so that you get the kind of personalization and control people expect in a digitally interactive world. So to sum it up, uh, as we move from this world of applications to participants, as we move from this world of programmatic computation to interaction modeling, and moving away from a fixed and inflexible or general purpose blockchain capability to a personalized and dynamic blockchain capability, we need a solution which is foundationally different, which supports uh, trillions of digital assets across uh, multiple networks in a simple and interoperable way. And more is the technology which is adapting.